Tiago, namaste. Thank you for being here. You live in Brazil. You practice Indian arts, uh, Ayurvedic health, Jyotish. Probably you do yoga. I don't yes. know. But you're here to introduce to us, in particular, Ayurveda, because that's what I like. But by all means, if you want to show its connection with other Indian arts, please do. Okay. So, first of all, I'm very happy to be here. I'm uh, glad to meet you. I find your work in the internet about Jyotish quite amazing, so my congratulations. And uh, I'm very happy to receive your invitation to speak with you. So I live in Brazil and I work mainly in the internet with Ayurveda and also yoga and Jyotish. So Ayurveda for me it's a very important way to understand how to gain and maintain health. Because nowadays uh, usually it's easy to find a way to uh, go to the doctor when you're sick but it's not so easy to find a way to go to the doctor when you're healthy. So Ayurveda it's a good way to understand how to improve your health not only to uh, regain uh, your health when you're sick. Okay look um, starting with the basics if you like uh, What's the basic principle of Ayurveda? You know, I want a healthy body. What should I not do? What should I do? Okay. Uh, basics. The most important thing in Ayurveda always is that you should eat only when you're hungry. And you always have to have hunger to eat. So this is the most basic and the most important uh, principle in Ayurveda that we call this the metabolic principle, the Sanskrit word for that is Agni. You, the suggestion is that uh, a lot of us are eating when we are not hungry. Yeah, because Does nowadays nowadays we eat because it's time to eat. But in Ayurveda you eat because you are hungry. Because nowadays we say, oh I'm hungry, this is not good. I should not be hungry. In Ayurveda, the first and the foremost sign of health is that you have good hunger. So when you're hungry in the lunchtime, it's very, very good for your health. And this is the most basic fundamental principle that we need to understand. Ayurveda, if you know anything on the internet, you probably you know about Vata, Pitta and Kappa. But this is not the first thing that you should know in Ayurveda. This can be very complex, this can be very confusing, this can be, oh, I don't know, I don't want this for my life. Ayurveda is very simple. It's very intelligent. Uh, well, what, what happens when uh, you want to have a family dinner and all of you sit around the table, but you're not all hungry at the same time? Okay, so the first thing is that we should uh, sit for a lunch with your family, not for a dinner. I'm not against that. You uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have dinner. You should have dinner only if you are hungry. But in Ayurveda, the main time for everyone to be hungry, it's in the lunch time. Dinner and breakfast actually are not things that everyone should do every day independent of their hungry. But lunch, everyone should do every day because lunch time in Ayurveda, around noon, is the time that everyone, in a sense, must be hungry. There must be times uh, when when it's wise to fast, when it's wise not to eat at all, yes? Yes. Uh, this can be done regularly, just like today, it's a Kadash. It's one day that during in a certain type of Indian tradition, there is no uh, eating of grains, certain types of grains. So today it's a fast uh, day for certain understanding of people in India and all over the world, mainly for people of Hare Krishna and the Vaishnava movement. So in Ayurveda, people say that Kappa constitution can do fasting once in a week, Pitta once, twice in a month, and Vata people uh, once in a month. So in Ayurveda, the main medicine that exists is to understand how to do good fasting. When you are not hungry and you should be hungry, you need to do some fasting. And the foremost medicine in Ayurveda that you should intake is warm water. So Ayurveda has hunger, 
has fasting and warm water as things that you can use to regain your health in a very easy and a very intelligent manner. It can be, it can seem very rough and very uh, poor medicine, but it's so intelligent that even with some good fasting and some good warm water, we can bring a lot of health for you. We can use cumin, we can use a lot of ginger and other stuff, but the point is that Ayurveda works with your body, not against it. Well, you know, you just, I don't want to digress too much, but you mentioned water, and I just wonder about the sources of water. A lot of people live in the city and, and they get their water from the tap, or, I mean, what emphasis would you put on how you store your water or where you drink from? Ayurveda um, pays a lot of attention from the source of the water. In the classical text as Charak Samhita, there is the reference for the water that it's collect from the rain, collect from the river, collect from the ponds. Uh, the water that is boiled just like to half of its original for one four, for one eight, for just like warm water. There is a lot of specifications about uh, different effects of different kind of water in our body. But just like for simple reasoning here for modern world, uh, it's not good to be drinking a lot of water with uh, fluoride. This can be very harmful for our uh, subtle uh, intelligence, for the flow of life force prana in our, in our body. And with a lot of um, chemical uh, production there. In Ayurveda, we need fresh freshness for our life. It, it doesn't matter so much if it's from a river or if it's from the rain. But the point is that it should be fresh water. Okay. So, look, um, Ayurveda is vegetarian. Is that correct? No and yes. Uh, Ayurveda uh, believes that if you eat a lot of meat, it's going to be very difficult for your digestive system to be healthy. But if you are with a very strong metabolism and you digest everything that you eat, there is no problem to eat meat. But in a yoga perspective, if you're interested in spiritual development, almost all kinds of religion say that you should be paying attention how much harm you make to life. So for spirituality, it's a good approach to reduce the amount of meat that you eat. Not only meat, but also the vegetables, the fruit, all the living things, it should be used without uh, pesticides and all the stuff. It should be organic and so but the point is that you, you don't need to be vegetarian to be Ayurvedic. But if you are a vegetarian, you can also be Ayurvedic. You can eat every day in the barbecue. Uh, in Brazil, there is a lot of tradition of eating barbecue. And you can also live of, of light. There is also people like this in Brazil. I think in the other parts of the world also. But the point is that we, we need to have a, a good metabolism. Ayurveda is not actually about what you eat only, it's what you digest properly. You see? You know, uh, in the ancient texts of Ayurveda, I, I have a feeling we were very different people. I mean, I think we're more hybrid now. Mm -hmm. I mean, now we're more of a mix of everything, uh, even the, maybe because we're eating imported foods for a hundred different reasons. I mean, yes. the human body was, was a different type of body. It was probably, immediately you knew it was all water type or all fire. As a, And now you different parts of the body are different elements. <laughs> yes. Do you think that's uh, For valid? Ayurveda, there is one concept that we call um, how much we are used to something. Okay? This we call satmiya. If you, your family is used to eat wet for generations, your body will have more intelligence to digest this. Okay? If your uh, uh, genetic line is more used to, you, to uh, eat corn, it's going to digest this more easily. Okay? So in Ayurveda, 
we recommend that for every meal, we should eat only one uh, grain that is just like rice, oats, barley, and this kind of uh, uh, watery grains, because they are very difficult to digest in the same meal one, more than one. But the point is that we are uh, evolving uh, in time scale, and the, the point is that some things our body are uh, learning how to digest. For example, tomatoes, uh, eggplants, uh, beans, all these things in ancient times, our body was a little bit, it was a little bit toxic to our body to digest. But there is some learning in our cells also. But the point is that Ayurveda says that you should eat fresh food and preferentially food that is grown nearby you. So Ayurveda says that things are grown nearby you, plants, foods, are better for your health than things that are brought from blood. Okay, so I'm just thinking, I mean, to put people on the right path to start with, if they're just getting used to thinking this way, uh, fruit is, is very good for breakfast, right? You in Ayurveda, you're, it's correct to eat fruit in the morning. Is in that the right? morning, if you don't have hung, hunger, don't worry, you don't need to eat. This is one point. You only need to be hungry at lunchtime. But in the morning, if you have hungry, you should eat things that are just like to start up the digestive process. In the same way that when we do a fireplace in the forest, we need to be careful how to start this fire. In Ayurveda, we are careful how to start the day, uh, how we are going to digest things. It can be fruits or it can be roots, or it can be just like bread, or it can be simple meals, and usually it's not so easy to digest things like yogurt, it's not so easy to digest things like meat, it's not so easy to digest eggs. I'm not saying that this is prohibited and this is not going to be good for anyone. I'm saying general uh, scale, okay? Yeah. Well, a, a lot of people um, w would need time to to grasp this. You know, I'm I'm actually stalling. I, I had a question. I lost it. Okay. Uh, you, you, you you've been marvelous so far. Um, yes, I know. I, we'll have to edit that part out. You, you mentioned yogurt at one point, and I know that you, you, yogurt's a, a good part of the Indian diet. But uh, regarding milk products, it's amazing how many people. In the West are against them and they okay. think that milk is not good. So this is the group that it's very important. Wet, uh, milk, you can say meat, uh, you can also say uh, even like things like rice, uh, you can say things with gluten, things with um, milk diary and eggs. People in the West say, oh, these are great uh, villains. We should not take them because they are going to be, spoil your health. In Ayurveda, we are not like that. Okay? In Ayurveda, we understand that all these kind of foods are heavy for digestion. And they have specific set of rules how to eat them. Milk, you can have it without salty or sour things. If you eat meat, uh, milk with uh, just like uh, bread, cheese, and milk, this is going to be terrible for a digestion because it's almost impossible for a body to digest it, okay? Eggs, you should not mix with uh, meat. So when you have a cheeseburger, there is egg there, and there is cheese there, and there is meat there, you can understand, you can have 100% sure that probably th that country is going to be sick. The point is that you are, Ayurveda is not against anything. Ayurveda is just wise and clever. Ayurveda say you need to digest it. And there are things that if you uh, just like put 5 times 50, it's going to be 250. It's not 5 plus 50. Okay? When we have combinations, uh, usually we are making times. And if you make 5 times 50 times 100, this is just like impossible to digest. So there are very specific and um, uh, clear guidelines how to eat well, to have good 
and uh, ple pleasure uh, in the while you're eating, but gaining health, not losing it. Do you see the point? Well, there there is a science to eating that most of us are unaware of. Yes, we, we're not conscious of the different properties of the foods we're eating. We because. Just in the West, we believe that we are what we eat, but this is a poor translation. The correct translation is we are what we digest, what we assimilate, and what we excrete properly. This is the full uh, sutra. This is the full line. In, in the West, the translation was just like part of it, so we missed the very important part of the line. No, the, the, the issue of digestion is, is continuously repeated in Ayurveda. I mean, a lot of ill health is due to poor digestion. Not a for lot. For example. Just almost everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I just wanted to kind of round that off. And, and uh, you, you've introduced us to, to some Ayurvedic concepts. There's so much more. But perhaps you could give a couple of minutes to... The medicines, uh, what type of medicines there are and what philosophy there is behind them. Okay, so usually when we think about medicines, we are thinking about herbs in Ayurveda. Okay, but the main medicine in Ayurveda is not Shatavari, is not Brahmi, is not Ashwagandha, is not all these herbs that are famous in Ayurveda. The main medicine in Ayurveda is the metabolic process. This is very, very important to understand. Because if you don't have proper metabolism, you can eat Brahmi to have your memory enhanced. And you're going to be sick because this is going to be poorly digested. And in Ayurveda, everything that is poorly digested is going to create inbuilt toxins. And these inbuilt toxins, we call this Ama, they are going to make you sick. Doesn't matter if it's just like the most nectar of existence. In Ayurveda, this is the uh, final mantra. A good metabolic process, Agni, is going to transform, transform poison into nutrition. A bad metabolic process is going to transform nectar, the most marvelous thing, into poison. So in Ayurveda, before we understand the concept of medicine, we need to understand the concept of how our body are going to transform this element into medicine. Because it's not just a matter of intake, it's a matter of uh, metabolic usage. Do you understand this? Is it clear? Uh, it, 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 you planted some seeds to think about. I, I, I don't want to say it's clear. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I mean, I was asking you about the medicines, and I, I don't want to uh, dispute your answer. Okay. But I'm not... I, I'm just I'm going not, to give I'm you an example. Now. Just please me, give me a chance with an example. If you go to the supermarket, and you buy some food there, does this make any difference to your body? No. Yes. Because you need no. to cook it before you eat ah, okay. it, right? So ah, this cooking okay. process... This is what Ayurveda calls Agni. If you just like eat the plastic there, there's going to be no importance, even if it's organic, even if it's uh, perfect. The point is that Ayurveda sees the transformation of the medicine into medicine, of the herb into medicine. Okay? So we can say that in Ayurveda we use ashwagandha, to give more power to the muscles. We can say that we use Brahmi to make our mind and memory clear. We can say that we use Shatavari to improve lactation. We can say that we use Guduchi for uh, immunity. If you go to the internet and you ask Ayurveda herbs, there's going to be a lot of things selling you, a lot of marvelous, uh, but not so true, um, medicines in Ayurveda even if even water it's a good medicine if you know how to use it in Ayurveda even water is a very dangerous poison if you don't know how to use it so Ayurveda is not a concept of intake only Ayurveda is mainly the concept of transformation into health 
Now is it a little bit clear? A little bit clear, but I'm I'm a little familiar with the the pharma, pharmaceutical side of Ayurveda. I mean, you you have a lot of metal medicines, thasmas. Yes. And you have decoctions which are alcoholic. And uh, yes, you have very, decoctions that are alcoholic. You have decoctions that are alcoholic, and also the decoctions that are not alcoholic. Yeah, but uh, I mean to say that it's very well thought through. It's very broad. It's I, I think probably millions of tons are produced every year. Yes. So no, I, I don't know. Perhaps your philosophy is just to uh, avoid them as much as possible. No, no, no not the point that we should avoid them, but we should understand they are going. I usually say like this. Do you know uh, roller skating? Just like rollerblade? Yes. So one foot, it's your dietary. And the other foot is your daily routine. So when you can walk, if you put a rollerblade in your feet, you're going to uh, run faster. Okay? So the medicines are just like the rollerblade. They can give you uh, better results if you know how to use them. If you don't know how to use them, you are going to fall off, you are going to crash your butt, and it, this is not going to be healthy for you. So in Ayurveda, medicines are not things that it can be always good. Depending on if you do good metabolism of them, you are going to be uh, better or worse. Depending if you know how to walk on these two feet, your dietary and your daily routine. You see the point? Yes. Yes, I do. So, and the point well, is that in Ayurveda, we have a lot of very powerful medicines, including things that are only sold in India with uh, heavy metal preparations. This is a very strange concept for a Western mind. It's a much more advanced. It's just like uh, Ayurvedic chemotherapy. It's really strong, powerful medicine, but it, you have to be very careful where you buy it, who produce it, and how you're going to use it. It's not you just know, like... The, it's the, the not very uh, thing that it cannot make harm. If you use it wrongly, it's, it can make a lot of harm also. The science of producing these, and they're all purified and there's a process, and indeed you pointed out, you have to know where you're buying it from, etc. But I want to say, it's the same science as alchemy. You continue down that process further, more stages, and you have the science of alchemy to create gold from a base metal. Uh, in Ayurveda, there is this concept, not in Ayurveda only, but in Vedic culture, the concept of seers. The seers are people that, the rishis, are people that go into deep meditation process. And they, like, download perfect information, complete information, just like in our culture, uh, Muhammad had the revelations, Ma Mahomet had the revelations. This concept of revelation is the closest thing that we have in the West about what these rishis have done. And they have downloaded this information almost 100% perfect. In a way that if you are not lost in translations and there is this problem and that, these are things that are not being enhanced. They are just like uh, perfect signs. This is why they are called Shastras. Because during time they just are perfect. They are not evolving. They are just uh, divine signs. Okay? But there is also in Ayurveda science in a way that we, uh, we are progressing. We are discovering in an analytical mind, not in a meditative mind. These two ways are uh, used, and they can be used, but the process of trying to understand how the ancient, how the ancient rishis discovered the way to detox uh, mercury and all these uh, heavy metals, we should not try to understand this with our rational mind, because it's just impossible to know that you have to do this decoction process in this herb a hundred times, so then with this specific kind of wood, this is not going to be toxic. This is not possible to be just like killing rats to discover this kind of science. Because our science is just like you try if it, and get error and then you get the correct answer. 
not all the signs are discovered in this way. Some signs are just like revealed by divine conscious, we can say this in the West. Okay? Well, yes, Diago, thank you for that. You're a, a wealth of knowledge and information. I, I would like to have you back. I think for, for my channel, this is probably long enough for, for one part, but I can think of so much more to ask you. Uh, I, if, if you will come back, will you come back again? Uh, sure. I will be very glad to talk in English because nowadays I have more than 1,500 videos in Portuguese. And in English, maybe I have 100 of Ayurvedic videos. No, I didn't understand. You have 1,500... Uh, Ayurveda, Yoga and Jyotish videos in my channel. Ah, videos on your channel. Yes, oh, but good. they are mainly in Portuguese. In English, oh, I have I have more like 100, maybe 150. So if you oh, like, oh, I, can, oh, I can send you some yes, links. So you can also share with people. And for me, yeah. it's very good to have an audience speaking English. Because for me, the work to spread Ayurveda, it's very uh, fruitful. We are going to live better. We are going to live easier. And we are going to live in a way cheaper. But in another way, wealthier. <laughs> so I'm glad to talk with you. We can make any amount of sessions you want. Because for me, it's a very good chance to spread this information that I talk in Portuguese, also in English, to your public and to other publics. Okay, so I, I will say thank you for today, okay. and then we can discuss when we can do another session. Okay, uh, I'm very thankful for that. I will only ask for people that are watching. If anyone uh, talks, uh, speaks also Portuguese and wants to help to make subtitles or make donations so we can make to, subtitles to our uh, Portuguese videos to English, I'm working on this now, right now. So I feel that this connection here today is the first manifestation of this movement to bring my more than 1,500 videos, there's a lot of videos there uh, in Portuguese to a more broader uh, spectrum of people that speak in English. Okay, so I'm very thankful for the for being here, Maurice. I hope that we can talk another times, and I hope to see you yeah, soon. No, thank you.